Hi, this is my end of internship presentation where I'll be discussing what I've learned over the course of my internship. Um, let's begin. My name is Emily Biedekofer. I'm from Chugiak, Alaska, so it's been a bit of a change to be moving here to Oregon, but it's been pretty cool. Um, I am in virtual design and construction. I'll be graduating in 2025. Um, it's been really cool to have a BIM internship because it's been able to teach me a lot about what I'm going to school for. So the company that I interned with this semester was Howard S. Wright, a Balfour Beatty company. Uh, the reason that it's called such a long name is because Balfour Beatty bought out the company Howard S. Wright, but because of all of the work that they've done in the Northwest area, they decided to keep the name Howard S. Wright. Howard S. Wright built things that many people know about. One thing in particular that you would probably know about is the Space Needle. That was a Howard S. Wright project. And because people know that name and associate it with so many amazing pro projects in the area, they decided to keep the name when Balfour Beatty bought it out. So my internship was with Howard S. Wright, a Balfour Beatty company. I started my internship in April and it was on April 17th. You can see that marked here. I have been working here through May, June, I'm halfway through July, and on August 15th is when I'm done. So by the time I'm done with my internship, it will have been five months. I've worked 40 hours a week for every week that I've been here. So it's been a pretty exciting time. Um, and I just have one month left, so that's very exciting. Um, so the first thing that you might be asking yourself is, okay, Emily, you have a BIM internship. What on earth is BIM? BIM in school was taught as building information modeling. So buildings, little glass structures with windows outside. I hope you'd know that. Information would be the drawings and documents and modeling is any 3D modeling that we do. Through the course of my internship, I have learned that BIM actually looks a little bit more like this. Um, these are all of the job responsibilities that I've written down over the course of my internship, and this picture here in the background is about how I felt doing it all. But for the simplicity of this presentation, we're going to stick with BIM being building information modeling. Um, this is kind of the toned down version of what we do, but it basically sums it all up pretty well. Okay, now I'm going to go over different jobs that I've been a part of for this internship. One thing that separates BIM internships from your typical internship is that typically in a construction internship, the intern is given one job and they focus all of their time and energy on that one job for the duration of their internship. Um, something interesting about a BIM internship is because I'm not assigned to one job, I'm assigned to a department, I've actually had the opportunity to work on several different jobs over the course of my internship. Um, I'm going to show four here, but I've been involved with over seven since the beginning of my internship. Um, this has been both a blessing and a curse because while well, most people or most interns learn their job and get it down and they understand it, the ins and the outs of it, I have very little knowledge of any project that I work on. I'm just told to work on it. So that's kind of a preface for what I do. The four jobs that I've been a part of have been the Tiger BMW project, the Springs Vancouver Waterfront, the University of Oregon Concordia, and the Mount St. Helens Police Department. BMW of Tigard, my job responsibilities were 3D modeling the mezzanine, 3D modeling the exhaust system, and going on shadowings and tours. This job has a special place in my heart because I was able to go there several times throughout my internship. Um, this was a tilt-up cast-in-place concrete job. Um, I don't know if you can see in detail, but this whole area behind the glass office is all, all a parking garage. So that was a lot of where I worked and that was a lot of what I got to see while I was on my internship. So that was very special. Uh, but now I'm going to go over the different things that I did. So the mezzanine exhaust system and what the shadowing and tours looked like. For the mezzanine, this took me about two months of work and I know it doesn't look like much, but I promise you it's in great detail. This is what the mezzanine ended up looking like ultimately. Um, there's a lot of detail. I took a couple zoom in shots so you could really see just how much detail was put into this 3D modeling. As you see, there are holes and screws in every single post. This was to really give an essence of detail to this 3D model. Uh, one thing that made this very difficult to model was the extreme lack of documentation that we had throughout the entire process. So a lot of this was left up to chance and because there was such a lack of documentation, of pretty much any guidance, this mezzanine was remodeled three separate times, all by me, and that's why it took me two months to finish. 
This was the gift they kept on giving and I felt like I could never fully be complete with it. However, I'm finally done. It's been uploaded into the model and they start construction on it very soon, which is super exciting. <laughs> Up next is going to be the exhaust system. Um, the reason that we modeled this exhaust system was so that it could be adjusted in Revit so that we could avoid any clashes and thank goodness that we did because there were over 1,000 clashes when we uploaded it for the first time. Um, this project took me about three weeks. I had to model everything from scratch. There are model paths on here that had to be put in so that nothing clashed with them to make it so that the sliders could get all the way across back and forth without hitting anything. That was surprisingly very difficult to do. But we got it done and that's very exciting. And then last there is the job shadowing and tours. So this is about what job shadowing looked like. We basically got to walk all over the job site, see what there was to see, and that was very exciting because we got to watch as the building got built up and up and up. We got to watch it all get put together. And this is one of the views. It was right next to a very busy highway. Most of the time there was traffic and they just kept on working. Uh, this is a picture from the top floor. It was four stories. This is the top level of the parking garage and it was very exciting to look at. That about sums up all of the BMW of Tigard. So we're going to move on to Springs Vancouver waterfront. That's this job. Um, for this job I wasn't incredibly involved but there were some 3D modelings that I had to be a part of so that's what I'll discuss with you today. Um, of course I was on every single meeting every week so that was four hours of my week taken up by this particular job. And then there were the fireplaces that I modeled. So basically all of these models started from scratch. Um, these two are fireplaces, this is a heater, and this is an energy vent. All of them had to be modeled from scratch down to the bolts. So this was a lot of work. It took me about two weeks to do all of them um, and plug them into the 3D model. But once we did, it was really beneficial because we could clash them against anything we needed to. And then we knew if something needed to be moved before we installed it, which was a huge blessing. One of the big sayings when you're working in BIM is we do as much pre-work as we possibly can so we don't have to do more rework later. And that stands true with this and with everything else that I've talked about. Up next is the City of St. Helens job. This job was a little different from the others because we hadn't won this job yet. I was a part of the pre-construction process, which is very exciting. Um, all I was given was this photo to work with and this ideal site plan, and I was asked to make the site plan for it. So this is what I eventually came up with. Um, I had to model a building and upload it into a different software where we could put in a crane and the cars, pretty much all of the great detail. I also was in charge of labeling. So this is how it turned out. They were very happy with it and very excitingly we won the project. So it was really incredible to be a part of that. Up next is the University of Oregon Concordia. This is a building that we have to do some work on. I'm not a big part of it. I have had a very small role in this job. However, I have been asked to 3D model vestibules that already exist, but are getting reinserted into the building. So this is just a close up of what those vestibules look like. Which wraps up all of the work that I've been doing myself in the 3D modeling. I would just like to take a quick moment to talk about the people. Um, this has been an incredible internship because I've met so many amazing people. Something about BIM internships is that you have to stay behind your desk most of the time you're on your computer and I love talking to people so in order to make this internship a little more worth my while I started messaging pretty much everyone I could find and asking them if they could tell me about their job responsibilities and that was pretty amazing. Um, so these are some of the people that I met and talked to. Um, we had a couple internship trainings, that's where these photos are from. This is very exciting, I learned a lot. Um, I went over job roles, responsibilities for project managers, project engineers, superintendents, schedulers, estimators. It was really incredible. I even got to have a conversation with the marketing director. So I just feel like the people here really took me in. They really made sure that I understood what I was doing and that was just the biggest blessing. And that about wraps up everything that I wanted to talk about for this internship. I had an amazing time. This has been an excellent company to work for. I'm really looking forward to my second internship. Thank you.